can everybody hear me? Okay, cool. Well, I, I usually talk loud too, so I apologize. So yes, I'm Jim Romano, uh, Director of Government Relations for Patient Services Incorporated, PSI. Um, we are a national nonprofit patient assistance organization. And that sounds really nice, so what does that mean? We raise private donations into disease-specific funds and then help patients with very rare diseases or chronic illnesses access their treatments and therapies. And we do it through a di many different ways. Um, just to give you a little background, we are 27 years old. And my boss, our president and founder, was a Presbyterian minister in Jackson, Tennessee. And in 1983, he was living the American dream. He was a minister at the Second Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Jackson. Um, married, had uh, two small children, um, but he also had a rare disease. He had mild hemophilia, the blood clotting disorder, and he'd never been treated before in his life. Uh, goes and plays basketball at the church picnic. He says, I went up for a layup, jumped, came down, and broke my ankle. Went to the emergency room, set the ankle, saw, oh, you have mild hemophilia. We're going to give you clotting factor concentrate, which is what uh, was used to treat people with hemophilia back in that time period. Um, in those days, clotting factor concentrate came from plasma, which came from you and me when we went into the, you know, the Red Cross blood drives and we would give our pint of blood and they would take it and they would manufacture it or fractionate it into different um, uh, treatments and one of them was clotting factor. Unfortunately, in 1983, most clotting factors which were made with um, plasma were contaminated. And so Dane always tells the story that he was there for about, you know, they set the ankle and he says, okay, well, I had never had clotting factor before. When the doctor said we were going to give it to you, he fought with him for about half an hour. He's like, I just want to go the heck home. So he said, okay, fine, give it to me. What he didn't know was it was contaminated and he was infected with hepatitis C and HIV. Went home, carried on with his life until his wife became very sick. And then he went and was tested because they were testing all hemophiliacs in those times and found out he was HIV positive and then his wife was HIV positive. And then she passed away in 1987 of AIDS, one of the first women in Tennessee to do so. Dana leaves his church, takes his two kids and moves to Richmond, Virginia where uh, his parents were retired to thinking, okay, I'm going to pass away quickly like my wife and I wanted my children taken care of. Through a series of uh, events, ends up in MCV Hospital uh, which is in Richmond, uh, and uh, meets the hemophilia um, hematologist on call, tells a story, and gets a job as the clinical counselor working with children who have terminal illnesses. Um, and that's where PSI was eventually born out of. Um, he was helping several, he was counseling several families when he heard about a lot of the financial issues that people were having. Um, and not, he was able to raise some local donations and paid two COBRA payments for two families. Everybody knows what COBRA is, hopefully. But if they don't, I get to that here in my talk. Um, but that's how PSI was born. And we started with hemophilia, and um, we help now about 30 different, over 30 different illnesses. So what PSI actually does to help families is a whole complement of services. And, and they're disease-specific. But um, we do health insurance, premium assistance, treatment, copay, coinsurance assistance. We help people with ancillary supplies, travel expenses. We actually have lawyers on staff who help some patients obtain disability benefits like SSI, SSDI. And then, of course, we also sometimes help with um, PAP. You know, um, getting free drugs to certain patients. So we like to say we are in a complement of services. And then there's my job, which is patient advocacy. Um, I got to meet Dana um, when I was in college, actually. Um, it's a little bit of a funny story. I had three uncles and two cousins who had hemophilia. And all of them were infected with HIV because of the medication that they took. And I was an angry teenager. I was an angry teenager because my uncle came to live with us when he was dying. And I couldn't believe this happened to him. So that's how I ended up meeting Dana when I went to college and started lobbying on a, on a bill that would compensate hemophiliacs, which I'll get to later in my talk. But um, PSI really helps people with a full complement of treatments and, and, and services. So these are the di disease groups that we help with. So we've either had programs in the past or currently have programs, and we have the Complement Mediated Diseases Program, 
with, but that's one of many. So we have hemophilia, primary immune deficiency, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. So we help a lot of enzyme deficiencies, plasma disorders, rare diseases. We help some cancers, um, you know, chronic myeloid leukemia, gastrointestinal stromal tumors. Um, the reason I like to show that is some people who are sitting there have in, in audiences, um, while they're there for that disorder, they know people who have other disorders. And it's always good to know that there's people out there to help. And that's what we're really here to do. Um, I'm here to, we're here to help people. So um, our CMD program um, is to help um, patients um, with, with about six diagnoses. Obviously, atypical HUS is one of them. But we also have AMR, um, SDEC, uh, HUS. Um, but the, the most important thing is once you have the diagnosis from your um, physician, um, you then qualify for our program. So there's several ways of doing that, but one of them is definitely we have a physician statement, you have a diagnosis, and then you can apply to PSI for assistance. Um, I'm going to see some industry jargon real quick. So um, if you all know this, great. A lot of people, a lot of disease groups I talk to sometimes, they're, you know, they're unsure, but obviously um, your deductible is like your out-of-pocket expenses. You usually, with most insurance policies, whether they're public or private, have to satisfy a deductible. Um, and so that's obviously um, a predetermined out-of-pocket cost. Um, co-payments. Sometimes co-payments and co-insurance are usually used interchangeably, but they're actually not the same thing. Uh, co-payment usually is a fixed amount, like your doctor visit, you pay a $50 copay or a $25 copay, or if you're getting your you know, flu shots, $10 copay. It's usually a fixed dollar amount, as opposed to co-insurance. And, and actually, when you're getting more and more expensive treatments, they, um, insurance companies have decided, well, we're going to have the patient be responsible for a very large percentage of that, whether it's 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. So those are usually fairly, oh, I'm tripping over everything, um, fairly large amounts. So that's what um, coinsurance is. So um, sometimes you know, people think they're interchangeable, but they're not. Of course, then you have um, your out-of-pocket expenses. Those are all the costs the patient has to assume, assume um, with, their, with their insurance policy. And with the Affordable Care Act, it's very important. You know, um, once your out-of-pocket is met, then usually the insurance company picks up most of those costs, if not all of them, from that point on. So knowing your out-of-pocket level is very important. Um, and that's some of the things that we help you with at PSI. Okay, so for our CMD program, what are the different types of services we offer? Well, obviously, um, we help health insurance premium assistance. And I'll go into all the different forms of health insurance that we help with. But we can help you pay your premium. We can help you with your co-payment, co-insurance assistance. So once you have your you know, policy and paid your premium, you get to go and, and you have um, your Solaris, you could owe a percentage of that, whether it's 10%, 20%. And so PSI can help you satisfy that. Um, we help with some ancillary assistance. Um, I will get into that shortly. Travel assistance and then infusion and nursing services. So we really, I think, for CMD, offer a lot of great services to the patient. So I'm hoping that if you haven't, and this is something you need assistance with, that you will turn to PSI. Okay, so these are your responsibilities. I talked about, you know, we have to fill out, usually you go online or you can contact PSI. Um, and you go you know, uh, to the PSI website, you can apply for the program. There's a pre-screening tool. Um, just to let you know, we help people from who don't qualify for Medicaid or who are uninsured all the way up to about 500% of the federal poverty level. Now, we take into account a lot of extenuating circumstances. So um, there's a pre-screening tool on our website that you guys could you know, go to and check out and you'll be in very good shape. Um, to determine whether you can apply for assistance. Um, but, um, you know, we get referrals from a lot of places, from the foundation, from the PAP with, with, the, um, with our donor, from specialty pharmacies. So we receive referrals from everywhere, but you guys can self-refer. And then um, all you have to do is show proof of, you know, with your 
um, like I said, a physician statement and then a proof of, of your insurance. So we have to make sure you recover whatever that is. So those are, you know, pretty important um, patient responsibilities. Okay, so forms of insurance. So um, we help for private or commercial coverage. We help with you with, if you can't afford your portion of your employer sponsored coverage. So, um, or you know, have your individual plan, or if you're in Obamacare or the marketplace, or COBRA. COBRA is, was the continuation services passed in the 1980s that basically allows you to bring your, to continue if your, if your um, company has 25 or more employees, if you lose your job, um, they have to, you, you have the um, ability to continue your coverage. You just have to pay 102% of the premium, which I know a lot of people, once they lose their job, cannot pay 102% of their premium. 100% of the premium, 2% administrative costs. But PSI can help you with that, and that's really important. Um, okay, some public insurances. We help people with all forms of Medicare. So we help you pay your premiums or your uh, Medicaid. Now, Medicaid has been going from traditional fee-for-service Medicaid to Medicaid managed care plans. So PSI can help you pay your premium of your Medicare managed care plan. Um, I have to laugh about Medicare. So about 10 years ago, when Medicare Part D, I can't believe it's 10 years ago, when Medicare Part D was coming online, I don't know if everybody remembered it, that on that Thanksgiving, so this time of the year was open enrollment, and a lot of people were getting together for Thanksgiving, helping their grandparents or their parents apply for Medicare Part D, because this was going to be the first time. So my wife and I drove to Georgia. Now, I hate going to my in-laws. I'm going to be perfectly frank with everybody, <laughs> and my wife knows that. So it's like going to the backwoods of Georgia, no offense if anybody's from Georgia, but they don't, get ca they don't have cable. Like, they don't get a newspaper. I'm a, like, junkie when it comes to that kind of stuff. And this was, like, 10 years ago. So um, my wife, gave, I said, okay, Carolee, I'm going to bring my computer. No, you're not bringing your computer, Jim, because you're going to spend the whole time on your computer doing work. You're not going to socialize with anybody. And I'm not, no, no, leave it at home. Okay, fine. Left it at home. Drove to Georgia. You know, unpack the car, because of course when we go to Thanksgiving, I have to bring all the Christmas presents to do Christmas with my in-laws. So, you know, drive all day from Virginia to Georgia, get there, unpack, sit down for five minutes, when my father-in-law comes and dumps all this stuff he had gotten from different insurers for Medicare Part D. So then I spent the, like, you know, three hours that afternoon going through, well, what, what Medicare Part D prescription drug benefit would work for him. He had Parkinson's disease. I said, Carly, if I had had my computer, I could have done this really well. <laughs> <laughs> so she's sheepishly sitting over there. So I spent about three hours. We found this good plan, no donut hole, you know, higher premium. Felt comfortable, but when you're doing it for a family member, you get a little kind of nervous because I'm like, if I don't pick the white right one, I'm going to never hear the end of it. Um, so my mother-in-law comes home from work. I said, okay, Phyllis, I did it. We found it. Here's the plan, blah, blah, blah. I went through the whole thing. This is perfect for you. I said, I hope you're happy with what I found. She goes, what are you talking about? He gets his drugs at the VA. <laughs> so, as you see, we help people with TRICARE, Veterans Administration, GH, J, J, uh, GEHA, which is the government program, and then we help people with their supplementals. My whole point in this is we help people from a wider range of insurance policies. So don't, I know a lot of people, there's a couple of things that people think of. And this is what's wonderful about our country, I think, is that we think about somebody else. No, my family's doing okay, so we really don't need it. So let somebody else who really needs it, when everybody really needs it. So we're here to help people with their different pro with their with different challenges when it comes to their disorders and, and really affording the care that their family members need. Okay, so this is the really important one I wanted to, everybody to get into is that not just it's not just premium and copayment for Solaris or a premium uh, for your, your your assistance, but it's other things. And I think this is what sets this program at PSI off from a lot of different others. We help with so much more, and so I hope everybody will take advantage of it. We'll help pay for co-pays for ancillary medications. So I know we were just talking about the meningitis vaccination, but we will help you um, 
if there's a large copay, we'll help you pay for the meningitis vaccine, uh, antibiotics. So we're not just going to help pay for the Solaris, we're going to help pay for all, any other complementary uh, treatments that you need. So that's very important. As new treatments also come up on to, onto the market, which I know that's a long way off at this point from what we were just from the presentation before me. PSI has to, by law, bring them in, you know, into as soon as they're on the market, then we will be helping patients with that. So that is a wonderful thing, but right now we can help you with those others. So that's very important. Um, testing services, this is wonderful. We, if, if your insurance, if you can't afford the diagnostic testing services, you can come to PSI and we can help you pay for those. If your insurance will not cover it or if it's a large co-insurance or co-pay for the tests, you can contact PSI. I, I, I was like, when I was doing the presentation, I thought, okay, premium copay. I mean, that is awesome. And then we will help people who are um, uh, with the genetic testing services too. So as you see, if, you, if your insurance won't cover genetic testing, contact PSI, which I have the contact information at the end, so I keep talking about it, but you'll, you'll see where it is. So um, that's very important. Um, so I think uh, hopefully that would take some of the... Um, you know, load on your shoulders off that, you know, people can help you with those. Also, um, we can help with lab tests and ER visits associated with the disorder. So that's really important. Um, and this is a great thing. If you're uninsured, we can help you with the lab tests and, and the diagnostic testing. So um, I know very few other programs at PSI like this. So this is extremely important. I keep saying that. I feel like, actually I feel like Donald Trump. It's huge. It's big. It's <laughs> extremely important. Pay attention. Um, but, but no, I was just like, oh, it's huge. It's great. It's wonderful. Um, but this is great. I was, when I was doing the presentation, I was really excited because we offer a lot for this community. Okay. Infusion nursing services. We'll pay for um, co-pays for infusion costs. Um, nursing services, home health aides. That's, that's a big deal. I know with our hemophilia program, most of our patients are in home health and have been for 20 years. In fact, we gave, um, Barbara and her son Matt came to our gala, we had a patient gala honor our donors and our patients back in September, and um, Barbara's son Matt sang, which she did a great job. Um, but uh, we honored somebody who helped pioneer hemophilia home infusion services in the United States. And so um, it, you know, they, I, I, I thought everybody had home infusion. So um, I was talking with uh, Cameron, where are you Cameron? She's gone, oh, okay, well she was talking about, oh she was excited about her, her daughter getting home infusion. I'm thinking, wow, I think of hemophilia where they've, it's been home infusion for like 25 years. So um, we'll help with the home infusion. Uh, this is wonderful, port placement, care replacement and supplies. That's a big deal. So if you have large co-pays because of that, Please contact PSI. Obviously, treatment costs, co-pays. Um, for uninsured patients, we will help with the um, fusion and the nursing costs. Um, that there seems to be what we'll help with, with uh, for uninsured patients. Travel, so we'll help your travel costs. This is a big deal too. I keep, again, I keep feeling like Donald Trump. It's a big deal, it's huge. Um, but we'll help. Uh, will help patients um, with their hotel room. So if you live far away from where you obtain your treatment or get or obtain your infusion, if you're not in a home health setting, PSI can help with that. So um, if you have to come to Iowa and you live in North Dakota or something, um, we can help pay your hotel bill. Uh, we can help, um, obviously you need to have a medical letter from your doctor saying this is what, why you need to go here, but I mean, most people will get that. So it will cover your hotel costs, which is fantastic. Um, obviously, I don't know if you're gonna pay for your stay at the Ritz Carlton, but you know, they'll, they'll help. Um, uh, round trip transportation, uh, cost is covered for infusion visit, port placement visit, second opinion. I mean, this is awesome, I mean, this is fantastic. Your mileage is reimbursed at 35 cents a mile if you do it via the road. Um, so round trip from physical address to treatment center. It's kind of like how I do my uh, <laughs> expense reports. You know, my home to here or there. Uh, get on MapQuest, number of miles. 
Um, airfare, fantastic. For you and for a caregiver, or if your child, for a parent, I mean, that's wonderful. That's huge. No, just kidding. Parking and tolls. So this is a great program. I cannot ask you enough to please take advantage of it to help your family members. This, this is, these are the little things, like parking, tolls. I, I, that's the burden. Like, you know, it used to be like, I know this is going to sound kind of silly, but I used to worry, I'm like, I wonder if the parking garage at the hospital takes credit cards. Yeah. I mean, that's something that really, like, so I mean, I know that's something that burdens people, and it shouldn't. So you can, you know, you don't have to worry about, wow, that was $50 to park at the hospital. So this is something you can take advantage of. Okay, so any questions on the program that I just described? Wow. Yeah, wow. Awesome. That is a great question. Right now, that is for the United States. Um, I know we do have, we, I, I want to be very careful here. And so please get my card after I speak or I'm going to be around tonight. Um, I think we have some programs to help patients in Canada. I didn't realize this was going to be an international meeting. So I, I, I saw a, a Canada section. I can't make any promises. I can't, but that's it. It's not international. But I think there might be, oh, we might have some assistance that we're working with patients in Canada too. Um, if there is a Canadian patient here who want to take my card, they can email me. I can get them that information. Yes, ma'am. I've got a question about um, submitting. Sure. My daughter was in the hospital in January and got out the 1st of February. And we missed the deadline to submit some bills. It had too much time had lapsed by the time we found out about PSI. It was summertime, and they said, well, it's got to be within so many days. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there's a third, I think it's a th 690, I think it's three-month look back. I couldn't remember. But yeah. they, you know, once we found out, it was wonderful. You know, we start getting reimbursed and right. everything, but we did, nobody told us about it at the hospital or, you know. I think we're a really good kept secret. Like, oh, okay. um, no, no, I meant like, there, I mean, it, 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 and I don't mean like we keep it a secret. I mean, yeah. um, we, we have to, that's why we, we're so glad to be here now so that we can educate patients, physicians, social workers who are in the room who know, okay, I can, we can contact PSI from now on. I think, I think there's a 90 day look back. Okay. So get my card. I can, I can look into this for you. That's not a problem. Yes. Yes. Um, it, there's self-referral, I was told, so they can go directly online. The ones, the one, the one, the, or they can go to their one source. I mean, they you can do it either way, but um, yes, but no, you definitely do it yourself online. Thank you. I saw a question up here. Okay. Um, any, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to have to double check on that so for Medicare patients. Know, it's not efficient for me at this point, but we kept asking. In fact, I used to talk to Susan about it, and she said, oh, you should try again, which we did. And had Sherry call them. She had her in, and they kept saying, if it's not covered by Medicare, we will not help you. With genetic testing, I didn't ask for anything else. Okay, well, that, let, me, I, let me check on that because... It was really right there in bold on our patient parameter. So I'm going to get you, you'll give you my card and we can talk. It could be. Let me, but no, that's good. No, I need to know those things, but I can go back and get answers. So I'll make sure you get my card. Or actually, in a couple of minutes, you'll see my email address up there. I just have to send me an email. Um, I do want to talk about an issue that we're having, and we actually had uh, Barbara come with us on this issue. Um, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, brings a lot of emotions to people, good and bad, um, for, for good reasons. 
PSI was an initial supporter of the Affordable Care Act in that the hardest part of our job prior to the Affordable Care Act was when a person came in who was uninsurable, they had a gap of coverage that was more than 18 months, um, you couldn't get them a policy. Or in some, in some states, Georgia, Tennessee, um, it's, it, was a, it was a problem, Florida, at least an individual policy. Um, sometimes it was during, uh, uh, some, there's some federal fallbacks like high risk pools, open enrollment policies at the time, you'd have to satisfy a uh, 12 month pre-existing. Who really wants to pay for a, something for 12 months that they get absolutely no help out of? Um, so PSI would pay people's premiums for a year before the, the, their drug coverage or their hemophilia treatment coverage was, was um, covered. And so that was, you know, a big deal. Fixing that was a big deal. We also had people who had lifetime insurance caps. You, if you had hemophilia, your clotting factor, you could go through that like in six months, sometimes a million dollars. So it was a big deal. So the Affordable Care Act fixed some patient protections at the start. However, we've run into some problems. Uh, two and a half years ago, CMS put out an interim final rule that allows insurance plans in the new marketplaces that Obamacare established, that we've been hearing a lot in the news recently, because all the premiums are going up, um, allows the insurance companies to not accept third-party premium assistance. Like, why the heck would they hold it? I was like, when this first happened, it was, I got my first letter on April Fool's Day in 2014. 2014, yeah, April Fool's Day. No, it was April Fool 1st. Louisiana Blue Cross Blue Shield, because of the CMS rule, we will no longer accept your check on behalf of Joe Blow. What? They put out a rule saying, yeah, you don't have to do this. It's being used now by insurance companies to take sick people off of Obamacare plans. And CMS is letting them do it because if they don't, then they're going to, you know, you've seen that people are pulling out of markets, insurance companies. So this is a way to try to appease the insurance industry. Um, but they've taken it a step further, and now they're like, well, if we can do it with this, why don't we try to do it outside the exchanges and to other policies? We don't want to have to accept sick people, which is the whole point of Obamacare. The, the reason we still supported it until they turned on us. So it's very interesting. So we have a piece of legislation. It's HR 3742. And it's called the uh, Access to Marketplace Insurance Act. And what the bill does is it, it actually codifies the rule and adds in nonprofit organizations, places of worship, and local civic groups. So like the Rotarians and the, um, it's in the House of Representatives. Um, and we have about 141 co-sponsors. But this issue is actually bigger than anything else because it's attacking charity in the United States and it's attacking who, pay, who can help patients. So I wrote this down here right now because um, I know Barb and the foundation have been real big supporters of ours and I'm hoping next year if you get PSI and want to be involved, you will. So with that said, I know we're running a little over, so I will keep my mouth, I will keep this. I'm just going to say thank you on behalf of the MORL because a lot of the MORL staff are uh, going to take on some other stuff, and so they wanted to say thank you, and we were very pleased to host you. So. so Here's my email, there's my number. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want to be involved with the legislation, please write my information down. I'll be here, I'll be here for the rest of the day, tonight. I uh, won't be here tomorrow, but please um, email me or call me directly. That's my direct line. And, um, or call Barb, she knows how to get a hold of me. So thank you very much.